Hello everybody, welcome to the world of 2D, 3D hybrid animatics. The focus of this tutorial will be about utilizing Blender's fantastic Grease Pencil 2D tool in combination with the 3D environment and 3D camera work in order to create 2D, 3D hybrid animatics, storyboards and animation, like the examples shown here. Before we dig in too deeply, here are a few tips for UI and navigation. Okay, so the first thing to do is if you're going to be using your Cintiq with your with your pen, uh, I advise changing the settings a little bit. So if you set up a profile in the Wacom tablet properties, so add a plus here, and you can see I've made a Blender one. If you look at the difference between, you've got right click and double click. Uh, and if I click that, I've changed it to middle click, right click. So what that does is it makes the first button into the middle click, which is the same as um, the middle click button on a mouse, which is essentially your main pivot. Another really efficient setting to change is tab for pie menu. So I'm gonna edit preferences, and then in the key map section, in the center there, you'll see tab for pie menu. If you click that on, that basically means every time you wanna switch a mode, like from draw mode to edit mode, to object mode, which you'll be doing a lot. You just press tab and this little radial menu comes up. You flick your your, um, your pen or your mouse in whatever direction you want and you're there instantly. It's really good, helps the workflow. Basic navigation in the viewport. Hold shift and middle mouse button to pan up and down, left and right. Hold control and middle mouse button and push in and out to zoom in and out. To pivot around something, hold the middle mouse button and move around. We're currently pivoting around the cursor point, which is on the barrel. If you press N to bring this tab up on the side of the viewport here, select the view tab and click lock to 3D cursor. Hold shift and right click to move your cursor to anywhere in 3D space. And it will begin pivoting around that point as we are on the bricks here. If I continue to use shift and right click to move the cursor to various parts of the environment, you can see that the pivot point changes. This is great for navigation in the viewport. Example scene one. This will be the main tutorial segment and focus on the scenario being displayed above. We'll cover everything from setting up objects, basic grease pencil principles like brushes, materials, orientation modes. We'll also cover things like keyframing, setting up cameras and keyframing those, and then how all that fits together. If you are already familiar with a lot of these principles, like setting up the grease pencil object, orientation mode, drawing, brushes, layers, you can skip ahead to the layout section of this first scene. I will make a note of the time code in the description below. How to create objects and specifically grease pencil objects. Okay, so wherever your cursor is, if I press Shift and A, it will bring up this menu. Now you can go to mesh and you can create say a cube or a circle or a UV sphere. I'll do that to demonstrate. And there it is, it'll come in exactly on that cursor. But we're not looking to make a UV sphere at the moment. We're looking to make a grease pencil object. So in order to do that, you do the same thing. Shift and A, bring this menu up, grease pencil. Now you can either make a blank or a stroke. The difference is that if I make a blank, it will, it will simply be blank and have no information whatsoever. If I make a stroke, it has this stroke here that you don't really want, but the advantage being it actually gives you two layers <clears throat> already over here on the right in the grease pencil option, and it gives you a bunch of materials pre-baked in. So it kind of is easier to, to use that, I guess, to start with. You don't have to. I tend to use the blank and then make, make my own materials. But we'll stick with the stroke for this demonstration. So once you have created your grease pencil layer, um, the really clever thing about Grease Pencil is that it's essentially a 2D animation layer of m as many drawings as you want contained within a three-dimensional object. And because it's in object mode here, <coughs> because it's an object, you can move that through the environment to any position in three-dimensional space that you want to, which is why <coughs> the stuff that I've done works the way it does in that I lay it out as a three-dimensional object but the grease pencil is still a drawn element. Now we'll take a look at draw mode, canvas orientation, and a grid to help locate where we are. On the screen right now, you'll see there's a grid displayed behind the stroke. That's because I've switched on the canvas. You can find the canvas option via this little switch up here. The drop down menu comes down. As you can see, here's the canvas, switch it on. 
And over on the right there, you'll see you can actually change the color of that grid. You can also change the scale of the grid, both on the X and Y axis. You can also move it on the X and Y axis, and you can change the number of subdivisions. The canvas is really great for knowing exactly where you are in 3D space and the orientation which you're drawing from. So let's take a look at these orientation options. So the main one that I use is origin and view. Now at the top there, you can see those two at the middle there. You can change those and there's various settings. We'll go through each of them. But the main one I use is orientation view. Uh, and as you can see, when I'm drawing, it, it draws whatever angle the camera is facing. So it's as if the canvas is sort of attached to the camera and wherever you turn, that's where you draw in space. That's because of the view setting. The reason that we're kind of sticking in one space and kind of rotating around is because I've set origin. Origin means that wherever your object is or the origin of that object, that's where the center point stays. So sticking with origin, I've switched to front XZ orientation. As you can see now, when I start drawing here, it's as if there's a flat wall on that axis at the origin point. And you could just draw on whatever angle you're drawing from in the viewport, it's always just gonna draw on that flat plane to infinity. The next option is side YZ. And this does the same thing, but on the opposite axis. And the reason it's kind of side and front are kind of switched here is just because the way my scene is orientated it might be different in the way you've set your scene up. So as you can see, it's continuing along that axis to infinity again. Next option is top XY. And as you can imagine, it means you're drawing from a top orientation. So everything you draw now is gonna be flat down, basically it's gonna look like it's flat down. Because my origin is on the ground, it's gonna draw on the ground. If I was higher up, it would draw like on a floating plane, but still flat. So now let's take a look at the cursor mode. So this would replace the origin mode. Now, remember before, if we hold shift and press right click and move the cursor around the environment, see the little cursor, the little 3D cursor there? Okay, so that acts now as kind of the origin point. Um, and if you draw up, because you're on the, um, the front axis, if I just keep drawing up here, wherever that cursor is, it'll draw up from it. So I'm drawing a couple of very basic little stick men here. Um, and something that's really useful to do with this kind of workflow is to plan out you seen, you could kind of, you know, dot your little stick man along. You can actually animate using this as well, this kind of feature. Um, or you can just draw out the various elements that you want to draw in the scene, you know, even if you're not going to animate them. This is just a great way of getting around the place. But you'll notice that there's no canvas showing up behind the origin point. But now there is because I switched it to cursor in the second sentence. So it's kind of, whereas before we were on origin front, now we're on cursor, cursor. And that's where, um, wherever your cursor is now, the actual canvas will show up there as well. The next setting is a personal favorite of mine, and I think you're gonna love it. Uh, it's called surface mode, and this is pretty awesome for various different reasons. As the name would suggest, it means you draw on the surfaces in the environment. Now you don't actually have to click your cursor on it or anything, I just kind of do it habitually. But as you can see here, I'm just drawing literally on the surface and it's sticking to it. I'm not telling it like that's where it has to go. It's just, it knows wherever you're drawing, it'll stick to whatever object is in front of it. Now you can see it's kind of clipping through a little bit here. So um, I dial up that setting that's underneath it uh, and I'll push the grease pencil in an offset slightly above it or, or below it, however you want to do it, right? But um, you just give it that little bit of an offset and you don't get any of that clipping anymore then. So as you can see, that's reading really clearly on there now. So you can pop around the scene and there's some bricks there. Um, so let's draw some little details on the bricks. This is absolutely fantastic for um, adding detail to 3D objects in the scene and giving it that lovely hybrid look. You know, you've got 3D objects and then you're drawing on it with 2D. Um, it's also very, very useful for drawing out floor plans. So if you, if you want to plan something out, just go into a top-down view, draw a diagram out, and then continue building a scene from there. The last main mode here now is stroke mode. And this is quite a weird one, but it's, it's got some really cool applications. It kind of uses existing grease pencil 
strokes, sort of like geometry, and you can kind of pull off them, branching off the strokes that exist already. So this can be really good for doing things like uh, trees, drawing trees or like vines that go between objects. It's got some really interesting uses. So let's take a look at the standard brushes we've got. So there's a variety here. I'm not going to go through them in detail, but you can experiment with them. So we've got a nice fat one. Um, we've got a nice inky one. It's my favorite for cleanup. It's really nice when you play with the settings a bit on this. Uh, if you ever need to increase or decrease the size of the brush, hold F and then use your cursor to make it bigger or smaller. Uh, that one's a really nice one, the noise one. It's got a nice inky rough feel to it. <laughs> That's a linear, really linear brush. And then we've got one that looks kind of like pencil or is edging more towards that kind of natural, like with a bit of opacity on it. That's nice for doing roughs. There are various other options at the top here. Um, so we've got advanced, which has got like various smoothing options. Then we've got stroke. And we've got curves, which uh, determines like thick and thinness, pressure sensitivity. So here I'm going to draw a very simple, super simple 2D man. And I'll use him in the project to come. Uh, so over on the right here, you can see I've got a grease pencil layer. Uh, so just the one layer at the moment, because I created a, a blank grease pencil for this. And I'm just drawing this super, super simple dude here. It's not a good drawing, but it'll do for now. Um, so as you can see, as I got to the bottom there, uh, I've actually clipped into the floor because I haven't anticipated the floor correctly. So I just switched quickly to object mode so I can reposition the, the uh, grease pencil object so it's more in line with where the, where the floor matches up. Uh, now, just me using the pie menu. Uh, remember to use it. It really does save time. I always forget. <laughs> so back into draw mode now to uh, finish off the legs. So now that I've done the line artwork on that particular layer, I'm going to create a new layer so that I can use it for my fills. So over on the right here in the grease pencil options, you press plus to create a new grease pencil layer and then use the arrows to push that layer up and down. Put it underneath for now because fills need to go underneath. So in the options there, you can click stroke and fill. I've set the color to be the same. Now, as I go around doing an outline, it's sort of like filling it in as it goes. Uh, continue to do that. You can let it go, you can do it in bits and bobs and it kind of all joins together until you've got your fill layer. And that's pretty much it for the, the basics of how you create a layer and then how you create a fill. And I'll be using this super simple man as the basis for the next stages of the tutorial. Super quick bonus round here on the sculpt and edit modes. You only use these near as much as object and draw mode in this, but they are useful. So edit mode allows you to manipulate all of the vertices within a grease pencil um, object and stroke. So you can use all your transformation tools, rotation, scale, etc. cetera. Um, this is really good for, let's say, let's say you've done drawing and you want to just kind of manipulate the scale of a particular portion of it, you can use that. Sculpt mode similarly is very cool. You get to manipulate it in a really organic way as you're seeing right now. Uh, you can push and pull the shape, it's really cool.